Okay, uh, let's get started with the class. So we will continue our discussion about penalty methods and I want to, so this is, this is, this is part of a penalty method. Right, so one way you penalize a solution is by asking that the cost should be very high for violating the constraint, right. So we are going to do a similar thing here uh, where we will assume that there is a penalty for violating the constraint and the overall if you if you think about it the overall tra train of thought in the class of methods we are discussing for uh, constraint optimization is to is to transform this original constraint optimization problem into an unconstrained optimization problem solve the unconstrained optimization problem we know how to solve it uh, it's it's fairly easy. You can use any of the several methods: gradient descent, Newton's method, approximate Newton's method, and so on, uh, to solve this unconstrained optimization problem. And if you solve it, uh, and you get to a local minimum of this uh, objective function, the new objective function that you have constructed, uh, hopefully that will be a solution to the original optimization problem. And in fact, in certain cases, we knew exactly that it is indeed a solution to the original optimization problem in particular if you found a local minimum for this new objective function that you have created it would be also a local minimum of the original functions in the constraint space so in particular the argument of x in x lc of x comma lambda is also the argument of x in capital X, f of x such that h of x is equal to 0, okay. So this is an unconstrained optimization problem if x was Rn and this would become a convex optimization, well not convex but it would become an optimization problem over a convex set if x was a convex set, right. And this is the original optimization problem where you want to minimize a function over a certain number of constraints. And so what we have seen so far is solve this unconstrained optimization problem or solve this optimization problem over a convex set and that will give you the solution to the original optimization problem over the same set but with certain number of equality constraint which could be nonlinear by the way, okay. So there is no there is no reason for us to assume that is hx is a convex function or is a linear function or an affine function or anything of that sort. It could be any arbitrary nonlinear constraint, okay. So that is really the, the key idea that we have exploited so far. If we had inequality constraint, we put a barrier, right. So we added argument of f of x plus epsilon b of x which was the same as, well not the same as but let me write it as approximately when epsilon is small, argument x in x of fx such that g of x is less than equal to 0, right. So in this case also this is an unconstrained optimization problem if x was Rn and it is a, uh, it is a optimization over a convex set if x was a convex set and this is an optimization problem of minimizing a function subject to some set of inequality constraint which could be arbitrary nonlinear constraint, okay, over this uh, convex set. So this was the main philosophy so far for the two methods that we have discussed and today I am going to uh, come up with another another function that if you minimize you are essentially solving this equivalent optimization problem okay so we are continuing our our uh, uh, discussion along those lines so any any question about this okay this is something that all of us understand right so now let me say that i want to minimize x in x 
of x comma lambda where p of x comma lambda is defined as gradient of x gradient of l with respect to x and lambda plus norm of h x square square oh this is also minimizing lambda in r m okay this is so look at this let's say x was r n okay so now i'm solving a minimization an unconstrained minimization problem over r n cross r m my question is if x star lambda star is a solution so where what's my original original problem i want to minimize f of x x in x h of x is equal to 0 so this is what i want to solve i formulate it as a penalty function which wants to minimize this object uh, this objective function so if x star so you can claim that x star local minimum and regular then x star lambda star minimizes or minimizes p x lambda right all of you agree with it all of you agree with the claim right if x star is a local minimum and it is regular then x star lambda star would minimize this penalty function okay So now let's say so all of you how many of you do not agree with this claim all of you agree with this claim right because gradient of x at l evaluated at x star lambda star is going to be zero h of x star is going to be zero so it satisfies i mean this and this is zero is the minimum value of this this objective function because it's always non negative so let's say i give you this this problem you formulated it as, it as minimizing this penalty function that you came up with and now uh, you found an x and lambda x bar and lambda bar that minimizes it and it's equal to 0 does that necessarily mean that x bar and lambda bar is a local i mean x bar is a local minimum and lambda bar is the corresponding lagrange multiplier how many of you feel that that is correct so i solve this problem i get x bar lambda bar my question is is x bar a local minimum and lambda bar the corresponding lagrange multiplier for this problem the original problem that we started with no no views i want to prove it by democratic means okay so so any thoughts okay no thoughts let me make another claim x star local maximum and regular then x star lambda star minimizes p x lambda okay so if x star was a local maximum not a minimum okay if x star was a local maximum and it was regular then that would also minimize the penalty function okay so this is not a good choice of penalty function okay why why if x star was local maximum then gradient of x of l at x star lambda star that will be equal to 0 and h of x star will also be equal to 0 okay so both the local minimum as well as the local maximum minimizes this penalty function so it's not a good penalty function okay so i want to write it as not a good penalty function it might work for instance if you knew that there is no local maximum okay then it would work but 
proving that might be hard for an arbitrary nonlinear problem. Okay, so, so somehow this is not a very good choice of penalty function. So let's uh, come up with some other penalty function. Again, our goal is to transform the original unconstrained uh, original constraint problem to an unconstrained minimization problem that's easier to solve. So this was our first attempt, but it doesn't seem to be working well for a large class of problems. So my next prob my next uh, approach is to minimize f of x plus c p of x x and capital x c is greater than 0 and p of x is defined as max of absolute value of h1 of x absolute value of hm of x Okay, and what's our goal? To prove that X star minimizes F of X plus C PX. Okay, or rather, I should I should I should say that I should say that prove that if x bar minimizes this, then x bar minimizes f of x such that h of x equal to zero. So, what I want to prove is that if I solve this problem, if I solve this problem. And I, I get a solution x bar, it must be a solution to this optimization problem. Okay, otherwise it's not useful because as, as we have seen, if I solve this problem, I might even get a local maximum and Lagrange multiplier pair. So it's not a good, good solution or good uh, way, good penalty function. So now my sole goal in this class is to prove this, this claim that if x bar minimizes this function that I have just created, then it also minimizes the original function subject to the equality constraint. That's the goal. One thing that's easy to note is that this function is not differentiable. Okay, so somehow we need to develop tools for non-differentiable optimization. Okay, so we'll do that once we prove this claim, then we'll see how to go about proving, how to go about solving this problem. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the following, how should we go about proving it? So let's look at this set B of epsilon. So let me set the notation X star is equal to argument X in capital X, F of X such that h of x is equal to 0. So x star is the original original optimal solution. And so I define this ball of radius epsilon around x star as the open set x in capital X such that uh, 
x minus x star is less than epsilon. That's one definition. And the other thing that I want to define is u epsilon, which is the set of u equals hx, x in b epsilon x star. Okay, and I'm going to define another function p of u, which is defined as min of fx such that h of x equals to u. Okay, we have seen this function before. Okay, p of u is the minimum value of the function under this constraint where u is in u epsilon. Okay. And our goal, updated goal, is to prove that true f of x plus c p of x is strictly greater than f of x star for x in b epsilon x star. So if you start from a point close to x star, uh, the x star is a strict local minimum of this particular function. By the way, uh, all of you should know that p of x star is equal to 0. Okay, p of x star is equal to 0. So this implies p of x star is equal to 0. Okay, why? Because h of x is equal to 0, so maximum of absolute value of h of x is, is equal to 0. Okay. So, so let's see how to prove this, this result. I'm going to, all of you have noted this down. Okay, these are the definitions that we will use throughout this derivation. So I want to minimize x in b epsilon x star f of x plus c p of x. What is this equal to? This is equal to minimize x in b epsilon x star u in u epsilon of f of x plus c uh, you know I want to set h of x equals to u here so let me Oh, and I want to set h of x equals to u. I can set it right here. Okay, so I am setting, I want to minimize, I want to minimize this function over x in the, uh, in a ball of radius epsilon around x star. This is same as setting hx equals to u 
and minimizing over all possible u in u epsilon and x in b epsilon x star. These two are equivalent problems. So since I have set hx equals to u, uh, my p of x, my p of x is max of absolute value of u1, absolute value of u2, all the way up to absolute value of um. Okay, because I have set hx equals to u. Is this trick clear? Question. Okay, what have I done? I pick all the points, so I want to minimize this function around x star. I set u equals, h, so hx equals u, okay, and I substitute this value of hx here in the penalty function, okay, and then I take u in u epsilon. De remember, by definition, it covers all the points in the set. Uh, the by definition of u epsilon, remember u of epsilon was u equals h of x, x in b epsilon of x star. Okay, so it covers all the points in the set. Therefore, this minimization problem is the same as this minimization problem. And now, I am going to write it as minimum over u in u epsilon of pu plus c max over i equals 1 to m absolute value of ui. Okay. Why should this be true? Why should these two be equal? Any thoughts? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. So, so, okay. So, what you are doing is you are writing this minimization over three things separately. So, let's see what that means. I will write it as minimum over u in u epsilon, minimum over x in b epsilon x star h of x equals to u of f of x plus c max of absolute value of ui, right, right. So I can write this minimization problem over three sort of constraints, I am going to separate them. Okay, so I'm going to take an outer minimization with respect to u and then an inner minimization with respect to x and x in b epsilon and hx equals to u. And what I notice, this function is independent of x, right? This function is independent of x. So all I'm solving in the inner minimization is this problem, okay? And what is this equal to? P of u, okay, this is equal to P of u by definition. So all I'm doing is, so all I'm doing is P u plus C max of u i, absolute value of u i, minimization over u in u epsilon. That's what this function is, okay? So this is a trick, okay? This is a trick that all of you should, should learn how to transform an optimization problem over x to a minimization problem over u. Okay, we went through some indirect routes, but this is a very nice trick, very neat trick. 
that one can use in optimization. And this part is fairly clear. This is independent of x. So I don't have to consider it. All I have to consider it is this minimization problem. And by definition, it's equal to p of u. Let me call this let me call PC of u as P of u plus C max of absolute value of ui. Okay, that's the definition. I'm going to erase a few things. Okay, we are still very far away from the goal. I don't, I don't know how to go from here to the final result. But what do I know? I know from sensitivity theorem that gradient of P at zero is equal to what? Anyone remembers what we did in sensitivity theorem? What's the gradient of P at zero? Anyone remembers from sensitivity theorem? What was, what was the idea of Lagrange multiplier? What was Lagrange multiplier? Lagrange multiplier can be thought of, well, you know, in equations, it's much easier. I don't want to put it in words. It's equal to lambda star, negative of lambda star. Okay, this was sensitivity theorem, if you remember. Okay, this is the optimal value. Remember what was PU? PU was, PU is equal to minimum of F of X, X in X, H of X equals to U. Okay, so this is the optimal value when you set the constraint hx equal to u. And what lambda star is, is the rate of change of this value with respect to this constraint, okay? So sensitivity theorem said that gradient of p of u equals minus lambda star of u. Okay, so that comes from sensitivity theorem, now from mean value theorem we get that p of u equals to p of 0 plus gradient p of 0 transpose u plus 1 over 2 u transpose second derivative of p at alpha bar u u. and alpha bar is in zero one. Okay. So this is mean value theorem. This comes from Taylor series. Uh, I mean, it doesn't come from Taylor series approximation, but you can think of it also as a Taylor series approximation. Usually in Taylor series, we'll write second derivative of P at zero plus some higher order terms in U but in mean value theorem, you truncate it at the second derivative stage. You can, you can actually truncate it at any point of time, okay? But in this particular case, we are truncating it at the second derivative stage. And instead of derivative at zero, I'm going to take some derivative in the, uh, I'm gonna multiply it by alpha bar u and then take the second derivative at that particular point where alpha bar will be in zero one and alpha bar depends on u. Okay, so alpha bar is not independent of u. 
So that's mean value theorem. I, how many of you have seen mean value theorem before? Okay, many people. Okay, so I guess this is fairly standard. So what is this equal to? This is equal to minus lambda star transpose. Okay. So I have P C of U can be written as P of zero plus gradient minus lambda star transpose U plus half U transpose second derivative of P of alpha bar U u plus c max of absolute value of ui i equals 1 to m okay that's pc of u so what was pc of u pc of u was pu plus c max of absolute value of ui so this is my p of u from mean value theorem where I have substituted for sensitivity theorem and this is C max of absolute value of ui. Okay. So what have we done so far? I started with this optimization problem in the neighborhood of X star. I transformed it using some small mathematical tricks to a minimization problem over this function PC of U, where PC of U was given by PU, where PU is defined in this fashion. Okay, there's a lot of definitions here. PU plus C of absolute, C of max of C multiplied by absolute max of absolute value of ui okay so this is fine what do we know about the structure of the function p well we know from sensitivity theorem that the gradient of p at 0 is negative of lambda star and i know from mean value theorem that p of u can be written in this particular uh, in this particular fashion so i am going to substitute all of it in one place and I have this result. Okay. So this PC of U is same as the PC of U here. What do we need to do further? Remember what was our goal? Our goal is to prove that if I find the minimum of this function, it should still become, it should still be the minimum of the original optimization problem, constrained optimization problem that we started with. Okay. So that's what we want to prove. So let's take, so claim is if C is greater than summation lambda i star, i equals 1 to m plus gamma, gamma, gamma is greater than 0, then I somehow want to make sure that 0 is a local minimum of this, this function. But there is a problem. The problem is there is a negative sign here. And then there is this, uh, this something that is making it positive, right? So this is, a, this, is, this is a linear relationship in u. This is maximum of all u. This is always positive. But this one can go negative. So somehow u might become, so u equal to 0 may not be a local minimum of this particular function. So I want to find a value of c, so that if c is sufficiently large, then this term will in effect cancel out this term, and will have 0 as a strict local minimum of p c of u. So that's what my next claim is. If c is greater than some threshold, then p c of u is strictly greater than p of 0 
for u not equals to 0. That's the claim. Okay. If c is greater than some threshold, then this u equals to 0 is a local minimum, strict local minimum of this particular function. So let's prove that. That's the next major thing we want to prove. But I guess you can start proving it in your head because it's very trivial. So step one, I have to show that C max over I absolute value of UI is equal to, is greater than or equal to summation lambda I star plus gamma max of absolute value of ui i equals 1 to m which is greater than equal to ui Okay, so instead of using lambda i star, uh, absolute value of lambda i star, I'm replacing it with lambda i star, so I get this inequality sign. And in this case, this, re this term remains the same. I'm replacing c with the lower bound on the c. Okay, so what do I get as, so step two, pc of u will be greater than equal to P of 0 plus this term and negative of the same term. Okay, they will cancel each other out. So I have plus gamma of max of absolute value of ui i equals 1 to m plus half u transpose second derivative plus you. Okay. So what happens in the neighborhood of u equals to zero? Okay, this is uh, this depends only on u i. This is u i square multiplied by some constant. Okay, so this term is dominated. by absolute value of ui or max of absolute value of ui okay why because this is this comprises of term ui square this term this is just ui and ui remember u is in the vicinity of zero u is in u epsilon okay so u is in the vicinity of zero so therefore this term will be dominated by this term as long as gamma is sufficiently large, okay? So what do I get? Step three. E everyone understands until step two? I'll pause here for a bit so that you can look at the equation. So we have this minus lambda star u term that gets canceled with this term. So I'm left with only this term. And then step three, u sufficiently small 
or u sufficiently close to 0 implies p c of u is greater than p of 0 plus gamma max of absolute value of u i. Well, actually p c of u is strictly greater than p c of 0. p c of 0 which is equal to p of 0. That is the result. Okay? We wanted to show that if c is large, larger than some threshold, then p c of u is strictly greater than p of 0 and that is what we have shown here in step 3. Okay, that is clear. And so what I have is, remember from the first equation, so what I have is, minimum of f of x plus c p of x, x in b epsilon x star is equal to min of u in u epsilon p c of u and I know that the minimum, the minimum happens at u equals to 0. So the solution to this part, the solution to this part is p c of 0 which implies that x star is optimal or locally optimal for f of x plus c p of x. By the way, this p is small p and this p is capital P, this p is defined here. How would you differentiate between small and capital P? Uh, this is capital P. This is capital P. I should write that minimum at u equals to 0. Okay, so we spent this entire class trying to prove the following result. If I define a penalty function so that I can solve an unconstrained minimization problem and reach the optimal solution, what I have to prove, what I have to be sure about is that the unconstrained minimum of this function, the penalty function that I come up with has to be a minimum of the original problem that I started with, okay? Because you can pick a penalty function whose minimum may not correspond to the minimum of the original problem you started with, okay? We saw an example of that. So we spent this class trying to prove that for this particular choice of penalty function, fx plus cpx, if I pick this as my penalty function, then I am guaranteed that a local minimum of this function, okay, local unconstrained minimum of this function is also a solution to the original optimization problem. So now instead of solving the original constrained optimization problem, I can solve this unconstrained minimization problem 
and get the solution, and I know for sure that it's a solution to the original problem. So that's what we spent. We spent this entire class just trying to prove this specific fact. Okay? Now that we have proved it, blindly, I can solve, I can go ahead and solve this minimization problem. But now I still hit another roadblock. This problem consists of maximization of absolute value of certain functions, so it's not a differentiable function. Okay, it has, it's a continuous function, p of x is continuous but not differentiable. Why is it not differentiable? Here is what p of x would look like. Okay, this is what p of x would look like. So it has points at which the slope is not well defined. Okay, so we need to, we need to get uh, get around that problem. So we'll, we'll do that in the next class. But now I want to introduce the more general problem so that we can look at it in the next class, which is as follows. For both equality as well as inequal inequality constraint problem. So this is what the overall function would look like. I want to minimize f of x such that h of x equals to 0, g of x is less than equal to 0. The unconstrained minimization problem would be, I want to minimize x in Rn. So in this case, x is in Rn. f of x plus c max of 0 g1 of x, gr of x, absolute value of h1 of x, absolute value of hm of x. Okay? So if I pick and I want my c to be greater than, strictly greater than summation of lambda i star plus summation of mu j star. Okay, and so the proposition is if x star is a local minimum to this, then x star is a local minimum to this, and if x star is a local minimum to this, then x star is a local minimum to this, okay? Assuming that x star is regular, okay? We need regularity in order to define these Lagrange multipliers here. Okay, any question? No questions? It's kind of surprising that everyone understood everything in this class. <laughs> okay. So penalty function approach is good, but you have to prove one thing. The solution to the penalty function is also a solution to the original problem. Okay. That's the crux of this particular class. That's the core of what we did in, the, in today's class. Okay, so uh, we'll meet on Wednesday and we'll see how do we solve this problem. Okay, that's our question. How do we solve this this problem, which is a non-differentiable problem? Okay, it cannot be. It's it's this part of the objective function is not differentiable. So how would we solve this problem? So that's what we will touch upon in the next class. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, submit your homeworks if you haven't done so already.